So this series is a complementary series to the simple AWS containers video that we did um, just last week. And in that video, we essentially deployed a, a set of Flask-based microservices using containers in AWS. And so that consisted of creating an ECR, Elastic Compute, Elastic Cloud Registry. Um, and then we built a Docker image based on Ubuntu and pushed that Docker image with the Flask microservices into that ECR repository. And then the, the third step would we deploy that as a, um, as an app runner instance. So we, you know, build the repository, push the container in it, and then actually instantiate an instance using app runner. Now, GitHub Actions is, uh, talk about CICD. It's a set of modern development principles for how we build and deliver software. So what GitHub Actions is, is essentially one of the tools that allows you to implement those principles in, in real life. It's one of many. Um, GitHub Actions uh, are, are really cool. We're going to just stretch the surface here. You can have it so that when you just push code, it actually runs and runs your code or runs the build automatically. So there's a lot, a lot to this, and this is just sort of a, a gentle introduction using this very simple uh, container example. And so what we're going to do is walk through all the steps for you to clone our repository and then configure GitHub Actions and run a build, and we'll look at the build. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is we want to go to the repository. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to clone this repository from this use the template. So all our project uh, projects are template repositories. So you click on here and you just say create new repository. And I'm going to call this AWS Action Demo. All right. This is going to be demo repository. Probably would make this private since you're doing builds, um, but that's up to you. Uh, you know, I generally, if, it's, if I'm going to put secrets or anything, I, I make my project private. So let's uh, create the repository. All right, now it's done. So the next step in the, is to actually pull this repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, uh, let's clone SSH, copy that here, and then we're going to go and build this within our development environment. The new repository. And let's see AWS Action Demo. And the next step, I do believe, is to run Terraform Apply on the backend directory. Well, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So let me go back to the development environment and do uh, check ENV. That's gonna make sure I have everything set up for this environment. Um, and then from that, I'm gonna go to CD backend. And I've got a simple main.tf file. And what I'll do is I'll do a Terraform init. And then we'll do a Terraform apply. Click yes, and it will proceed to build the S3 bucket. So, what are we using this S3 bucket for? What is a backend? You may wonder. Well, what it basically is, is when you do a Terraform build, there's this file called Terraform TF state. And this is what maintains the state of the build compared to what's in the account. So, when you do a plan or apply, this is what it's comparing. It's comparing the state file with the actual it actually is built. Now, this is my own directory, so I can't share this. And so what we're doing is we're creating an S3 bucket. And within that S3 bucket, we're going to write that Terraform file. So to do that, I, I, this this build built the S3 bucket. And now we need to go configure it. Now this build also builds a configuration file. So if I back up and I go to the ECR directory, you'll see that it created this new file called 01 ECR backend from that build. So if I go uh, ECR backend TF, you'll see that it is specifying what bucket to use. I use my account number and that because you have to have a unique name for a bucket. And then I have a, a, a key, which effectively looks like a directory and say, this is where I want my Terraform TS state file to go. So it created the build that we ran before, created that S3 bucket, but it also created these backend files. 
So if I go and back up to App Runner, you will see that there, that's also um, there, and I, I just use a slightly different directory for that. Uh, now we need to push those backend files into our new project. So let me go back into here, and I'm going to do uh, git add backend files. All right. And then we hit uh, uh, git push. You see it's creating the, the two files that we created there. Git push. And now that's in the project. So if I go back and look at the project, you will see we're in, um, this is my, my clone. And if you go to ECR, you will see that file is now there, uh, now. So, so both places. Next step is number five. That's to configure the GitHub secrets for the build process. And so what we need to do is, since we're in AWS, we've got these, these three secret values. So let's go back to our project. And we're going to go to settings. And we're going to go to secrets and variables and go to actions. And I'm going to say new repository secret. And I'm going to do something rather than relatively innocuous. I'm going to say region. So I'm going to go region. And it's going to be US or yeah, US uh, East 2. So that's going to be the region I do. And I hit add. Now what I need to do is create all the, the other two. I've added my, my three secret values. Um, so uh, this is the sort of information you want to keep secure. Let's go to actions. Now let's baby step this. Let's run the check environment build. So I'm checking China to build. I'm going to say run workflow. And let's see here, hit refresh. You're going to see it run. And what this build does is it's going to go through and install everything it needs to install. And then it's going to like Terraform, Docker. I put Packer in here. This project is going to use in Packer. But if you're going to use this project as a starting point with other projects, I, I figured it would be good to show you how to install Packer. Then it's going to end up running the validate script. And so it's going to make sure all the required variables are set and we set them. It's going to show you the versions of the tools that we're using, Terraform, Docker, the AWS CLI. It's going to make sure it can connect with those credentials and that all the backend files exist. So if you forgot to push the backend files, it's going to say, hey, you got to have a backend to run within this environment. So that is it for the check and the V. So let's go back to the last one, the last list. And... Now let's do the big kahuna. Let's run the build. So I'm going to hit build and we'll set run workflow, hit refresh. And what you're going to see is the three phases that we keep talking about. You build the repository, you build the Flask container, then you build the app runner instance, and then we validate. Okay, so while the build has happened, let's look at where these uh, workflows exist. And essentially, you create the special directory within GitHub within your project .github workflows, and that's where you put these YAML files that describe the builds. Now, the biggest thing is if you go into these files, there is the setup of the environment variables. Then there's also you know these different jobs. But at the end of the day, what it is is it's a shell script. You know, you're running bash scripts. So I almost take the exact like apply that as a H. The approach that I usually take is I create shell scripts for my builds. And then I just take those shell scripts and lift them totally and put them in these, these pipelines. There is some tweaking that you need to do, but they, they, they flow very, very nicely. Um, so this is just a, basically another way of running your bash code to do the build, but it's managed by, um, managed by GitHub. Now let's get back to the build. Okay, the build has completed. We're sort of looking at the if you look at the high-level summary. You click on the individual components, so you build ECR. It it sets up everything. The apply terraform, this is where the shell script that's the apply.sh is essentially lifted and put in. And you can see you can get pretty much the same output. Same with the build flask container. This is going to be the uh, build flask container, which is the part, it's going to be the Docker part. This is the one that's huge, where it's building the Docker. 
uh, information and at the end it is pushing it into the your your ECR registry then the third phase is we actually instantiate and run the code so it's again also if you look at the apply.sh it's just taking that code and running it uh, so you see very similar output so uh, we are going to run validate and you can see it's going to give you the full URL. I'm going to click on that or copy that. And I'm going to go and go to here and say, bam. And that's going to give me my um, good to go endpoint. That's sort of the smoke test. Uh, everything else at this point can work the same. You could go use um, Postman to exercise these, these endpoints, but that's not really the focus of this. So we'll probably just leave it at here. The last part is you want to be good stewards of your cloud accounts. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go click on do destroy and I'm going to run that workflow. It's going to destroy uh, this, this product or this project.